His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, after a fire in Al Mangaf resulted in casualties and injuries. His Majesty extended sincere condolences and sympathy to the Emir of Kuwait and the families of the victims, praying to Allah Almighty to rest their souls in eternal peace and wished the injured a speedy recovery. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace Ambassador Mohammed bin Ali Al Ghattam on the occasion of the issuance of the royal decree appointing him head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission in Qatar with the title of Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary where he took the legal oath before His Majesty the King. His Majesty congratulated the Ambassador, hailing his competency in carrying out his national responsibility. He wished him success in carrying out his diplomatic tasks and asked him to convey his greetings to the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad al Thani, and his wishes of prosperity to the people of Qatar. His Majesty hailed the deep-rooted fraternal relations between the two countries and the mutual keenness on bolstering them to achieve the interests and aspirations of their people. Ambassador al Ghatam thanked His Majesty, expressing pride in the Royal Trust. He affirmed that His Majesty's directives are a motivation to exert further efforts to bolster cooperation and fraternal ties with Qatar. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also sent a cable of condolences to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mash'al Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, following the Al Manga fire that left several casualties and injuries. His Royal Highness sent two similar cables. One to Kuwait's Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Mubarak Al Sabah, and Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Ahmed Abdullah Al Ahmed Al Sabah. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed al met with Brazil's President Rodrigo Pacheco as part of the Speaker's official parliamentary visit to Brazil. al Muslim affirmed the parliamentary keenness to bolster bilateral work, highlighting the development of relations in all fields in light of the support of His Majesty the King and Brazil's President. He said that Bahrain has an attractive environment for investors and business owners, which contributes to bolstering economic and trade cooperation between both countries, adding that the Representatives Council is keen on increasing cooperation in, la in the legislative field. And for his part, Brazil's president stressed that Bahrain is a vital partner for the Brazilian economy and investment through its strategic location in the region and its close friendly relations with his country. The Speaker of the Representatives Council also delivered a speech at the Bahrain-Brazil Parliamentary Group Ceremony on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between both countries. al Muslim affirmed parliamentary support for strengthening their strategic partnership and for developing bilateral cooperation. He praised the growth witnessed by the historical relations, the increase in the volume of trade, economic and investment exchange, and the endeavor to improve the system of educational, cultural and tourism cooperation. The speaker expressed pride and appreciation for the decision issued by the Brazilian National Council in 2022 to establish the Bahrain-Brazil Parliamentary Group to consolidate bilateral relations and achieve greater rapprochement between both countries. The President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, received representatives of Al Azhar Al Sharif, the Secretary General of the Council of Senior Scholars, His Eminence Professor Dr. Abbas Suleiman, the Secretary General of the Islamic Research Academy, His Eminence Professor Dr. Nathi Ayad, the Secretary General of the Council of Muslim Elders, Judge Mohammed Abdul Salam, and the accompanying delegation. A joint consultation meeting was held to prepare for holding the Islamic Dialogue Conference hosted by Bahrain in early 2025 with the participation of senior scholars in the Islamic world and scholars of Islamic institutions worldwide. Sheikh Abdurrahman highlighted the directive of His Majesty the King to move forward with the Islamic Dialogue project, 
called for by the Grand Imam and Chairman of the Muslim Council of Elders, His Eminence Professor Dr. Ahmed Al Tayyib at the Bahrain Dialogue Forum. As part of his visit to France, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, visited the headquarters of the International Criminal Police Organization, or Interpol. He was received by Interpol President Major General Dr. Ahmed Nasser Al Raisi. The latter welcomed the Interior Minister, hailing the visit and its benefits, including supporting the organization's role and responsibilities per the international cooperation to fight crimes and take security challenges. He highlighted Interpol's dedication to reinforcing security cooperation with the highest accuracy, professionalism and swift response in exchanging and analyzing information and fighting international crimes. Meanwhile, the Minister of Interior applauded Interpol for reinforcing cooperation in fighting crimes, exchanging expertise and building police capabilities through security and legal procedures. He also praised Interpol's advanced forensic database system for contributing to the fight against crimes. He highlighted the organization's professional efforts in supporting police authorities in fighting international and cross-border crimes using the latest technologies to protect global security and peace. The minister was briefed on Interpol's efforts to promote international cooperation and training courses to enhance the capabilities of police personnel and law enforcers. He also noted the expansion in the cross circle of crimes, including economics, electronics, cyber security, emerging and cross border crimes. He appreciated Interpol President's role in promoting cooperation and fighting all types of organized crime, especially in exchanging and analyzing information through a joint database. He affirmed the significance of controlling crimes with the progress in technology. The Interpol president hailed the role of Bahrain police through the active participation in many joint security operations in cooperation with other police authorities to tackle crimes. He applauded the role of Bahrain's Interpol and its efforts to support joint operations within the framework of the international organization. The meeting discussed security topics, including using AI programs to combat crime. The minister was accompanied by Bahrain's ambassador to France and interior ministry officials. The Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture Engineer Wa Al Mubarak inspected merchants' preparations for Eid al Adha to provide all the needs that facilitate buying and selling in the Rifa' Central Market. The Minister affirmed the readiness of Bahrain's Central Market for Eid al Adha, noting that these markets witness heavy commercial activity during holidays and occasions. He said that his ministry is preparing for these occasions by facilitating all requirements to provide food supplies in sufficient quantities to meet citizens' needs. Al Mubarak stressed the keenness to develop the system of central markets in Bahrain as they are the most vital project to which the government pays considerable attention. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce intensified its inspection campaigns on Bahrain's markets ahead of Eid al-Adha celebrations in order to activate the continuous directives to intensify control and inspection during occasion. The Ministry's Assistant Under Secretary of Control and Resources, Abdul Aziz al-Ashraf, said that on markets and shops that are seeing a high demand during this period in addition to an inspection in Manama's central market where it was found that there is an abundant and wide diversity of fresh food and no indicators show that any of them are insufficient. Al Ashraf noted that intensive campaigns were also held on shops that are highly visited during Eid and that the promotional offers are approved and prices on shelves match points of sale, ensuring that there is no commercial fraud. He said that no severe violations were monitored by the judicial seizure officers, except minor ones, indicating that these inspection campaigns aim to ensure the fairness of commercial transactions and protect shoppers during AIDS crowded demand for different commodities.
The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser Humaydan, visited the Nurek Dam Station for Electrical Energy, known as the Torsen Olgabayov Station, on the sidelines of his participation at the International Conference Water for Sustainable Development 2018-28 to in Tajikistan, where he was received by Vice President of Norak City, Sharat Azim Zada, and Director of Norak Energy Station, Shaidinov Fadladin. Hamidan was briefed about the dam station and praised the technologies used, pointing out that the distinguished model used in Tajikistan achieves the maximum benefit from the natural resources to increase agricultural production and expand the manufacturing capacity in the country. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqaf and Chairman of the High Committee for Hajj and Umrah Affairs, Nawaf bin Mohammed Al Muhawda, bade farewell at Bahrain International Airport to the last group of Bahrain pilgrims heading to perform Hajj in Saudi Arabia. Al Muhawda affirmed that the ministry, in coordination with Bahrain Mission for Hajj and all comp competent authorities, is working as a team to implement the royal directives of His Majesty the King to use all capabilities and to provide the utmost care to serve Bahrain pilgrims in light of the relentless follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister. He affirmed that the doors of the Bahrain Hajj mission are open to Bahraini campaigns and all Bahrain pilgrims around the clock to provide support from various committees. He thanked the Interior Ministry, Bahrain Airport Company and King Fahed Causeway Authority for their efforts to ensure smooth trips of Bahrain pilgrims. The deputy head of Bahrain Hajj Mission, Mohammed Tahar al Ghattan, announced the completion of delivering camps in Mina, Arafat, and Muzdalifa for Bahraini pilgrims. The announcement comes in cooperation with the mission committees in preparation for Hajj. Al Ghattan said that the mission supervises the work done by the companies hired to provide Bahrain pilgrims with the necessary equipment at the locations designated. He said that the mission follows up on all security and safety requirements and the readiness to receive and serve the pilgrims. The chairman of the Sunni Endowments Council, Dr. Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed bin Futais al Hejri, launched an inspection campaign to follow up on the administration's preparations for Eid al Adha in Bahrain's governorate. Al Hajri stressed the readiness of receiving worshippers on Eid al Adha, stressing the need to create places in a way benefiting this occasion and provide all comfort and safety for worshippers. He thanked all collaborators, including governmentals, private, and volunteer teams, for their continuous efforts in providing a safe and appropriate environment for this occasion. The inspection comes within the framework of the Sunni Endowments Council's keenness to follow up and evaluate the preparations to ensure ensure the best services to worshippers during the performance of their rituals. The civil defense teams extinguished a fire in residential buildings and shops in the old Manama Souk. The chief of public security and head of the National Civil Emergency Management Committee, Lieutenant General Tarak Al Hassan, inspected the site to follow up on the firefighting and rescue operations for injured and trapped individuals. He said that the team rushed to the site within five minutes of receiving the case at 4.22 p.m. and immediately carried out rescue and fighting operations led by the Director General of Civil Defense to prevent flames from spreading. He added that the cooling operations commenced, nine people sustained injuries and breathing problems.